find the forces in all the members of the trust shown below and in this case uh, our trust consists of uh, three inclined forces and they are inclined at an angle of uh, 60 degrees so here we have an angle of 60 degrees and at joint E we have a vertical load of uh, 1 kN joint B is uh, supported on uh, rollers and therefore we are going to have a vertical uh, force or a vertical reaction that is RB joint uh, A or end A of the truss is supported uh, by or it is hinged in other, in other words it is hinged and therefore we are going to have a vertical uh, reaction of RA as well as a horizontal reaction that is HA at this point now uh, we are going to, be, uh, to begin with uh, determining the length of members A, C, as well as A to D. And therefore, the length of member A to C, that is A from A up to the point of action of uh, the two kilonewtons load, that is going to be uh, this four, since that is the hypotenuse multiplied by uh, the cos 30 that's going to give us the adjacent therefore the adjacent will be given by hypotenuse multiplied by cos 30 cos 30 and the uh, cos 30 that is a uh, 3.464 therefore you get 3.464 meters good then we also need uh, the length of uh, AD and when we consider triangle ADF this angle D is uh, 90 degrees here since this is that degrees this is 60 and therefore this angle is going to be 90 and therefore uh, length AD again is going to be given by the hypotenuse that is the distance from F to A which is uh, 4 plus 4 8 meters multiplied by cos 30 multiplied by cos 30 and that's going to be 6.928 therefore you have 6.928 meters now after getting the lengths of those two members we are going to determine the reactions at B as well as the reaction at A and in this case, we are going to take moments about point A. Therefore, we go to reaction. Let me write in short. Reaction calculations. Reaction calculations. And in this case, we are going to take moments. Taking moments about point a take moments about a and we are going to have uh, the following remember the sum of the uh, clockwise moments must be equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments now uh, one of the anti-clockwise moments that we have is rb times the distance from b to a which is 12 meters that is 4 times 3 and therefore rb multiplied by 12 is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by the distance from uh, uh, multiplied by the distance from uh, C to A then we are going to have this 1 multiplied by the distance from D to A and then we have this one E multiplied by the distance that is this one multiplied by the distance from E to A so we are going to have uh, 2 that is this lot times the distance from C to A, which in this case is 3.464. Plus, these are clockwise moments. Plus, another clockwise moment of 1 kN multiplied by the distance from D to A, which is 6.928 meters. Plus, 
this downward acting force of 1 kN times the distance from E to A, which is uh, 4 meters. Therefore, plus 1 times 4. So this is going to be RB times 12, which is going to be equal to um, 6.928. That is 2 times this uh, is uh, 6.928 plus 1 times 6.928 plus plus 4. And that's going to give us a total of 17.8564. Uh, 17.8564. So the reaction at B will be 17.8564. We divide by these 12. And that is going to give us a reaction of 1.488. Therefore, reaction at B is going to be 1.488 kilonewtons. So, we are going to write it here. 1.488 kilo Newton. So that is the reaction at B. Now to get the reaction at A, we are going uh, first of all to calculate the total vertical components of inclined rods. Therefore, total vertical components of inclined rods. So we come to total vertical components. of inclined lords. Now, we have said that these inclined lords are inclined at an angle of uh, 60 degrees and therefore their total vertical um, load is going to be this 1 kN plus this 2 plus this 1 therefore we have 1 plus 2 plus 1 we multiply it by the sign of the angle at which they are inclined that is multiplied by the sign of 60 degrees since all of them are inclined at an angle of 60 degrees and that's going to be 3.464 therefore we have the vertical components of inclined rods being 3.464 and three point four six four kilo newtons kilo newtons again we have the total horizontal components of uh, inclined loads so you go to this is total vertical so you go to total horizontal components of inclined loads and this is going to be one plus two plus 1 multiplied by the cos of the angle under which they are inclined and that's going to give you 2 kilonewtons 2 kilonewtons very good now to get the reaction at uh, A we are going to say that the sum of all the upward forces that is RA plus RB is equal to the sum of all the downward acting forces. Now, all the downward acting forces that we have, we have this 3.464, which is the total vertical components of inclined loads. So, that's going to be 3.464 plus this 1 kilonewton load at E. So, plus 1. Therefore, this is going to be RA plus RB, which is 1.488 which is equals to 4.464 the reaction at A therefore is going to be given by 4.464 minus 1.488 and 
that is going to give us 2.976 therefore reaction at A is equals 2.976 kilonewtons kilonewtons and we are going to write it here 2.976 kilonewtons now to get uh, this horizontal reaction um, it is that one the horizontal components of inclined loads therefore the horizontal reaction here is 2 kilonewtons 2 kilonewtons so that is the horizontal a uh, horizontal reaction good so ladies and gentlemen after determining the values of the reactions at a reaction at b and horizontal uh, reaction at a the next thing will be equilibrium of various joints equilibrium of various joints and in this case we are going to begin with the uh, joint a so i'm going to write there joint a and this how it looks like and this the member that it has we have a load of two kilonewtons there we have a member on this end and we have a reaction at a that this is an external load of two kilonewtons this is a joint c this is joint e this is a reaction at a which is a 2.976 kilonewtons 2.976 kilonewtons that is joint A <clears throat> we have a lot of uh, 1 kilonewton at that point <clears throat> good so we also have uh, a horizontal reaction of 2 kilonewtons at that point 2 kilonewtons that is the horizontal reaction so let's assume that um, this is a compressive member compressing joint a and this is a tensile force i mean a compressive force and this is a tensile force this being member one this would be our force f1 this is member two so that is our force f2 and we have an angle of uh, 30 degrees, that is angle C, A, E. Now, as usual, we are going to begin with resolving the forces vertically. Resolving forces vertically and applying this principle of summation of all the vertical forces to be equal to to be equal to zero so in this case we are going to have a f1 sin 30 so we have f1 sin 30 that is converting this slanting f1 uh, to be a vertical f1 so therefore f1 sin 30 plus this reaction of 2.976 therefore plus 2.976 because those are opposite acting forces that force will be equal to 1 multiplied by sin 30 degrees sin 60 degrees sorry not sin 90 because this is a an angle of 60 degrees that we have here so f1 sin 30 plus the reaction at a which is 2.976 
is equals to 1 multiplied by the angle at which this one kilonewton uh, uh, load is inclined. Good. So this is going to be F1 sin 30 being equal to 1 sin 60 and we subtract 2.976 that is taking 2.976 the other side of the equal sign now this is going to be f1 which is going to be equal to negative 2.11 so 1 sign 60 is a 0 0.866 minus 2.976 you get negative 2.11 and then we divide by we divide this by sine that we divide that by sine that therefore negative 2.11 divided by sine 30 that's going to give us negative 4.22 kilo newtons now that force being a negative is going to be a compressive force therefore we are going to ignore the negative sign and light here compressive force so that means that the force f1 is compressing joint a as we have shown on our diagram here from there after resolving the forces vertically the next thing will be resolving the forces horizontally so resolving the forces horizontally and applying this principle of summation of all the horizontal forces to be equal to zero so this is going to be this uh, horizontal reaction of two kilo newtons minus one times the cos of this angle we described all this uh, uh, in our first uh, video on this topic the reason is why when we are uh, resolving the forces horizontally why uh, we usually take cos of this angle so if you haven't uh, watched that please consider viewing our first video on this uh, topic so that's going to be 2 minus 1 that is this lot times the cos of this angle that is cos 60 so 1 cos 60 which is going to be equal to F1 cos 30, F1 cos 30 plus F2. F1 cos 30 plus F2. So that is what we are going to have. So this is going to be 2 minus 1 cos 60. That is uh, 0 0.5. Therefore, 0 0.5 is equals. We have the value of F1, which is negative 4.22 multiplied by cos 30 plus F2. 2 minus uh, 0 0.5, that is uh, 1.5. Plus, we bring this negative 4.22 cos 30, this side of the equal sign. And that's going to be... Um, 3.6546 uh, 3. 3. So 3.6546 that is 4.22 cos 30 and that's going to give us the force F2 therefore F2 will be given by 1.5 plus 3.6546 which is a 5.15 5.15 kilo newtons and in this case this force being a positive force is going to be a tensile force a tensile force meaning that the way we have indicated it that it is pulling joint A is correct now after we are done with the joint A the next joint we are going to consider is joint C. So we go to J.
joint C, joint C. Now, the details of joint C, this is how joint C looks like. It is like scissors. It is like scissors. We have a load of 2 kilonewtons, an external load of 2 kilonewtons. This is a joint C. This is joint uh, D. Here we have joint E. We have joint E there. And here we have joint A. Now, um, let's assume that we have a force that is compressing joint uh, A. This is uh, 90 degrees. This one is a compressive uh, load. And again, we also assume that that is another compressive uh, load. This is um, member 3, and therefore this is going to be F3. So we have a load F3 at that point. This is uh, member 1, therefore we have F1. This is member 4, therefore we have F4. Now, resolving the forces uh, horizontally, okay, in this case, uh, we are going to have this. This force F4 and this force F1 are supposed to be equal. Likewise, this force F3 and this 2 kN force are also supposed to be equal. Because they are acting along the same members, they are acting along the same members. Therefore, we can say this, um, FAC, FAC is equal to FDC. FDC, which is equal to F4, the force uh, which is equal to F1, the force F1 is 4.22 kN, therefore that's going to be 4.22 kN, which is a compressive force. And therefore, F4, which is on member uh, DC, is going to be 4.22. 2, 2 kilo newtons which is a compressive force on the on the other hand the force f3 or the force on this member c c e is going to be equal to this force of 2 kilo newtons therefore the value of the force f3 is 2 kilonewtons and it is a compressive force it is a compressive force as well because it is compressing joint C very good now after we are done with the joint C the next joint we are going to consider is joint E that joint there. Now, let's assume that we are going to have a tensile force that will be named F5. On member CE, we have a compressive force that is a F3. F3, a compressive force of 2 kilo newtons. Now, we are going to begin with uh, resolving the forces vertically. Therefore, resolving, resolving forces vertically and applying this principle of summation of all the vertical forces being equal to, being equal to zero. So in this case, we are going to have a F5 sine 60 is going to be equal to F3 side 60 plus this 1 kN load that we have at joint E. Therefore, 
f5, this lot here, multiplied by the sine of this angle, that is sine 60, will be equal to f3 multiplied by the sine of this angle, that is sine 60, plus this downward acting load that is subjected uh, at joint E, whose value is 1 kilo newton. Um, this is going to be F5 sine 60 being equal to F3. We know the value of F3 is, uh, which is 2 kilo newtons. Therefore, 2 multiplied by sine 60 plus 1. And therefore, the value of F5 is going to be um, 2 multiplied by sine 60, that is uh, 1.7 uh, plus 1 divided by, uh, by sine 60. And therefore, that is uh, 2.732 um, divided by sine 60, which is uh, 3.155. And therefore, F5 is 3.155 kilonewtons. And this force being a positive force, it means that the force will be tensile just as we have indicated on member ED. So we have uh, F5 being 3.155 kilo newtons, which in this case is a tensile force. Very good. After we are done with the resolving the forces uh, vertically, we are going now to resolve the forces horizontally. Therefore, resolving the forces horizontally and applying this principle of summation of all the horizontal forces being equal to being equal to zero. So we are going to have F2 F2 minus F3 cos 60, F3 cos 60 being equal to F6 plus F5 cos 60, F5 cos 60. So that's what we are going to have when we resolve the forces horizontally. F2, we have the value of F2, which is 5.15, therefore 5.15 minus F3, we have the value of F3, that is 2 kilo newtons, therefore 2 cos 60, 2 cos 60 being equal to F6, which we don't know how much it is, F6, plus F5, which is 3.155 multiplied by cos 60. So this is going to be 5.15 minus 2 cos 60, that is equal to 1, is equal to F6 plus 3.155 multiplied by cos 60, that is 1.5775, 1.5775. So 5.15 minus 1, that is 4.15. Bring this, this side of the cosine, that's going to be minus 1.5775 is equals to F6. And therefore, F6 is going to be equal to 
57 kilo newtons and that force being a positive force it is going to be a tensile force tensile force therefore that is how we resolve the forces horizontally the next joint we are going to consider is a joint f and these are the details of the joint f we have joint b joint e here e b then we have joint d joint g there we have f7 f9 f6 f10 and as usual we are going to begin with the resolving forces vertically resolving forces vertically and applying this uh, principle of summation of all the vertical forces to be equal to zero so resolving forces uh, vertically we are going to have uh, f7 sin 60 plus f9 sin 60 is equal to zero now we had s7 uh, being equal to zero therefore that makes that uh, calculation f7 sin 60 to be zero uh, plus f9 sin 60 is equal to zero therefore that also makes uh, f9 to be also equal to zero therefore the value of uh, f7 uh, i mean uh, f9 is zero as well and uh, then we resolve the forces horizontally therefore Resolving the forces horizontally and applying this principle of summation of all the horizontal forces uh, to be equal to zero, we are going to have uh, F6 being equal to F10. Therefore, we can say this. This is joint uh, F. So we can say that F, F, E, F, F, E is equal to F, F, B. F, F, B. And in this case, F, E, that is a F6, is a 2.75 kilo newtons. And therefore, that makes a F10 to be also equal to 2.57 kilo newtons, which is a tensile force, a tensile force. And therefore, that F10 is 2.57 kilo newtons. Uh, the next joint that we are going to consider is a uh, joint B. And therefore, drawing the details of joint uh, B, we are going to have the following. So this is joint B. Joint B consist of the following members we have a reaction at b reaction at b that reaction is equivalent to 1.488 kilo newtons then here we have a joint f this is joint g that is joint g um, we have f11 let's assume that that is a compressive force so we have f11 there here we have a tensile force that is um, f10 we have f10 there whose value is 2.57 kilonewtons then this angle is 30 degrees that angle is 30 degrees likewise we are going to begin with uh, resolving the forces vertically resolving the forces vertically so we begin with resolving forces vertically and applying this principle of summation of all the vertical forces to be equal to zero so, dissolving the forces uh, vertically, we are going to have F11 sine 30 
f11 multiplied by sine 30 plus the reaction at b which is uh, 1.488 therefore plus 1.488 is equal to 0 so this is going to be f1 being equal to take 1.48 the other side of the equal sign that's going to be negative 1.488 we divide this by sign that divide that by sign that and this is going to give us negative 2.976 kilo newton and therefore f11 being a negative force means that that force is compressive and therefore our assumption of a compressive f11 is true therefore that is a 2.976 kilonewtons which in this case is a compressive force compressive force so that is the value of uh, f11 and therefore ladies and gentlemen i now believe that we have the values of all the lots on this uh, truss that we have here and we are grateful for watching our video please if you have liked it uh, remember to subscribe hit the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new uh, structural engineering uh, video you'll be the first person to be notified let's meet in yet another episode Thank you.